Hello, I'm Helen Bradley. Welcome to this video tutorial. In this tutorial, you're going to see step by step how you can get this image from this point to this point using the creative tools available to you in Lightroom. One of my YouTube subscribers sent me this image and asked me how I could improve it. So I'm going to work through my workflow for giving this image a bit of punch. The first thing I'm seeing is that this image out of the camera is a little crooked. So I'm going to click here on the crop tool and I'm just going to rotate it so that it is less crooked, more straight up and down. And I'll click done. Having done that, you can see here that the image is bowed slightly. It's just a function of the lens. So I'm going to apply a lens correction to it. I'm going to open up the lens correction dialog here, go to manual. Now the problem is some barrel distortion. So I just want to adjust it by adding a little bit of pin cushion distortion. Now I don't need very much, so I'm just going to click in here, just press the up arrow. I think something like five or six will be sufficient. And I'll press enter. I'm going to leave that dialog and let's go back to the basic panel and just see what this image needs. Well, if we have a look here, we could say that this image is slightly underexposed. The problem is as soon as we try to expose it, we're probably going to lose detail in these areas. And the reader who asked me to improve this image actually wanted to bring out the detail here. So we don't want to lose anything if we can possibly help it. I might add a little bit of exposure, but I don't want very much. I do, however, want to start bringing down highlights because I want to protect these highlight areas over the flowers and the decorations here. As far as shadows is concerned, I really want to send the background to this image to the back. So I don't want to bring out the shadow detail at all. And there's precious little shadow detail that I really want to recover in the flowers. So I could probably even back off the shadows a little bit to try and start heading the background towards darker. For whites, I will want a white point. So I'm going to hold the Alt or Option key and just drag on this slider just to see where my whites are. As soon as they appear, I'm just going to back off slightly. I'm going to do that for the blacks as well. I want to see some blacks in this image. Well, given that I want to send a fair bit of that background way, way to the back. I'm not fussed that I'm going to get quite a bit of black here. So I'm going to go a little bit heavier on the blacks. We can add a bit of clarity to crisp up the image and we can add a little bit of vibrance too. If we want to, we can approach the tone curve and perhaps add some contrast. I'll usually test these two. I'll test medium contrast and then strong contrast and work out which of the two I want. Well, you know, I think strong contrast is going to work pretty well for this image because we want to bring out the detail in the flowers. So I'm pretty happy with that. Now that's a good basic adjustment for this image, but there's a lot more creatively that we can do. So let's look at the creative end of the scale now. Well, one of the things I'm looking at is the possibility of improving some of the greens in these floral arrangements. So I'm going to click on color. And I want to click on green. And I want to try and make my greens a little bit brighter. So I'm thinking a little bit more towards yellow and take the yellows a little bit more towards green. And that will green up some of this foliage. We may also want to bring out the red in these berries. Right now they're a little bit on the orange side. So let's click on orange and let's drag them hue wise a little bit closer to red. And that's making them just a little bit redder. With the green foliage, another thing that you can do is to darken it. So take the luminance down a little bit and that will darken these areas. Again, enriching the colors here. So for everything that we do to the greenery here, we want to start killing this brickwork. And one of the ways we can do that is with a graduated filter. So I'm going to click on the graduated filter here and I'm going to apply one in here. So I'm just going to drag inwards. If I hold the shift key, it's going to drag in a perfect vertical line. Now my graduated filter it seems to be set to a 1.52 increase in exposure, which is exactly what we don't want. So I'm going to double click it to reset that value and then start walking the exposure down because I really want this to be quite dark. I also want the transition to be fairly subtle. I don't want it to be very harsh. So I'm going to make sure that these two lines are fairly well spread apart from each other. 
And I might bring the shadows down too because all of this helps send the brickwork to the back. And I'm going to repeat that on this side too. So let's go and get the graduated filter. And let's just drag in here. Again, trying to make a shallow transition here from the filter being applied to not applied. And again, walking down our exposure, darkening this. I think this is not very straight. And maybe darkening the shadows. Now this is starting to bring the viewer's attention into the foliage here, but there's still some work to be done. We can bring a graduated filter up from the bottom here too. Just dragging up, holding the shift key to make sure it's straight. Again, making sure that there is a sizable distance between these lines so that the transition is a little bit shallow. And again, darkening the shadows and reducing the exposure. Now we want to move in a little bit to the brickwork, so I'm going to click here on the adjustment brush. I'm going to set it to auto mask just for now. I'm going to set the size to be a reasonable sort of size and I do want quite a large feather. And for this I'll probably wind down the flow just a little bit. I'm going to click to set the point for my adjustment brush and then just start painting. I'm going to be really careful because I have the mask turned on that I don't hit any of the green area. And obviously the adjustment brush is set to increasing exposure, which is not what I want, but it doesn't matter right now. What does matter is that I get this brush down. So I'm just going to click and really attack this brickwork. And making sure that I'm not on the leaves. And the mask will actually help a little bit here because as long as I don't click on the leaves, then I'm not going to be applying the mask to the leaves area. If I want to see what I'm doing, just press the O key and that's going to show up this mask overlay so I can see very clearly where I've been painting and just make sure that none of it is in an area where I don't want this effect to be applied. I'm also going to bring in a little bit up here too. I can press the letter O to remove the mask overlay so we're going back to just seeing the image and of course the exposure is way up here. What we want to do is to bring it down. And we want to bring down the shadows as well, just to darken everything up. And click Done. Now, because I've got some light here, I actually want to throw some light using this light here. It's a gimme. The fact that you've got a light right in the middle of the image gives you something to hang your lighting from. So I'm going to select the Adjustment Brush and I'm going to click in here, just click once or twice to make a nice, sort of red spot here and I'm going to color it. So I'm going to go down here and grab a sort of orange color for the light. And when I click done you'll see that the light actually is beginning to look as if it's actually lit. I'm going to do that a few times. I'm going to make sure that I add color to this light because it's a good chance that this is actually some sort of tungsten bulb. And if it's a tungsten bulb, it's going to be throwing a sort of yellow-orange light. Now at this point, I can turn Auto Mask off. I can decrease my flow. I can keep my feather fairly small and certainly my brush very small. And I can start painting out some sort of potential light rays. So I'm just going to drag out something that might be sort of rays of light coming from the globe. I'll press the letter O and you can see that these are light rays. The O is just showing us the overlay for this particular brush. So that's where I've painted. I'm going to press O again to just hide that. Now I may not want to bring my exposure all the way up, but I certainly do want to throw some color into this light as well. Let's see our progress so far. I'm going to press the backslash key. This is the image out of the camera and this is the image that we've got so far. The next thing I'm going to do with this image is hit it with a couple of radial filters. I'm going to click here on the radial filter and I'm going to drag out a oval. Now invariably the 
radial filter goes exactly the way that you don't want it to go, but don't worry about that. All you're worried about at this stage is actually getting it in position and getting it the right shape. Down here is an invert mask option. And of course, what we want to do is to do some work on the flowers or the greenery here and leave the background as it was. So I'm just going to make this a little bit narrower. Now I don't want it to adjust the exposure, so I'm just going to back that off. But I may want to do something like improving the clarity, just hitting this area of the image with a little bit more clarity, just to make it a little bit more crisp and sharp. I can also apply a little bit more saturation to it this way. I'm going to do the same over here. Again, just go and get the radial filter and just drag it over here. Put it in position, invert the mask so we're affecting what's in the middle here. Back off the exposure to nothing at all. And now I'm going to increase clarity again to give it a little bit more grit and perhaps increase saturation just a little bit. And click Done. And now I'm going to attack the middle here. And I can attack the middle of this image here probably just with another radial adjustment. So let's go and get the radial filter, drag out a sort of oval. It's going to fit pretty nicely in the middle here. Invert the mask. And here what I want to do is, of course, bring down my exposure because I want to darken this area. Anything that I can do to bring the light up on this foliage. And click Done. Now I think the finishing touch is just going to be to get in here in between the leaves and try and darken this off just a little bit. So I'm going to do that again with the adjustment brush. I'm going to do it with a small size, a not terribly big feather, but I do want a fairly sizable flow here. And I'm just going to start working here. I'm going to turn Auto Mask on. And I do want to see as I'm painting. So I'm pressing the letter O so I can just see where I'm painting here. And I'm looking for areas where things are just a little bit lighter perhaps than they should be. I can adjust the brush as I move, either by going across here into the panel and adjusting the size of the brush. But the brush will also respond to the keyboard. So you can press the close and open square bracket key to adjust the brush size as you work. I just find that a really handy thing to do. So let's just go and continue here, trying to pick up these areas that perhaps I didn't pick up as well when I first attack the edges of this image. OK, let's press O to turn this off. Let's go and work with the exposure. We're just going to bring down the exposure just a little bit, trying to make some depth, some suggestion that these plants are well in front of a area that is in the back and that is quite dark. And obviously, if you had an image like this, you would be continuing to work at this. You might even want to zoom in to see if you could get an effect a little bit darker still. Now, one of the other things you may want to do is to actually light this window here. So we can just zoom into this window, go and get the adjustment brush here. We want to paint on some sort of yellow light here. We want it a little bit of extra exposure, but not a lot. We're just going to hit these areas which are a little bit lighter than others. And we'll come up with the suggestion that maybe there is some light pouring out of the window here. Anywhere that you have a window or a light that you can light up, you have the potential of getting some really interesting lighting effects in Lightroom. Always look out for an image that has a light fitting in it because there's a chance to really play with relighting things and getting some fun and interesting effects, as well as developing your Lightroom skills, of course, as you do so. Now, if you've got 
an effect but it's too much you can always come in here and just click on this adjustment here and then just wind it back so this is affecting this adjustment over here and I can increase or decrease the amount of the adjustment just to smooth it out I think that could probably do with a little bit more work but you can get the feeling as to what is potentially possible this is the before and this is the after now I'm thinking a lot of this part of the image really isn't helping the image, it's just some extra sort of space. So what we might want to do is to actually just crop the image in a little bit more closely. The graduated filters, even though they're attached to the side of the image, they're still being in force on the image as much as they cover the area that we've actually got left on the image. So don't think that by cropping your image you're destroying your graduated filters. They're still there. And I'd probably finish off with a vignette because the vignette's going to allow me to darken these corners. So I'm going to choose Effects and I'm just going to hit this with a Highlight Priority Vignette again just to darken these corners and again bring your eye into the center of the image so I think that's a pretty good result the before and the after it's been done very quickly in Lightroom using all the tools that are available to you in Lightroom so thank you again to my reader Christy for giving me a chance to play with her photo I hope you've enjoyed this video I'm Helen Bradley. Thank you for joining me for the video. Look out for more videos here on my YouTube channel. Consider subscribing to my channel and you'll be alerted when new videos are released. And visit my website at projectwoman.com where you'll find more tips, tricks and tutorials on a range of applications, including Photoshop, Lightroom, Illustrator and a whole lot more.